So what we have here is a set of random numbers. Um, they appear to be in no logical order, um, apart from the fact that I've put them into colours. What we're going to do is to sort them using a set of standard computing algorithms. The first one we're going to look at is bubble sort. Um, and bubble sort will look at each of the pairs as we go up, um, and then we'll sort our list into order um, using a variety of swaps. It's the easiest one, and the idea with bubble sort is that it bubbles all of the high numbers up to the top, leaving us with fewer items to sort. So the first thing we need is a pointer. Um, and our pointer will start at item one. It will then move up each item in the array until it gets to the penultimate one, so the one which is the length of the list minus one, then it will have no further to go because there's nothing for it to then, if it goes up to here, there's nothing left for it to sort. So let's have a look. We're going to look at this one first. Um, and with our pointer here, it's going to check this one and the one next to it. Um, and the one next to it is a one, so we need to swap those items. So here we are, we're looking here, and we swap the items over. Then our pointer can move up to the next one, um, and it can look at 39 and 20 and say, yep, I need to swap those two. So we can swap them over. We're moving the pointer up one. We can look at the others. We can move our pointer up one, check them, swap them over, only if needed. Um, for this one, it needed to go all the way up this way. And then finally, we're at this point, which means it checks the next one, swaps it over. And because we are here, there's nowhere else for it to go. But 39 has bubbled all the way to the top. Now, if we look at our list, it's not sorted yet. So what we need to do with our pointer is it needs to come all the way back to the beginning. Um, and our pointer will then go all the way up again. So we'll need to have the loop for swapping our items and then an outer loop, which allows us to move our pointer from here all the way back to the middle and keep going all the way back to the middle until it's actually sorted. So let's see that a little bit quicker. Now at this point, what we do is it doesn't just stop because we can visually see it's in order, but our pointer needs to do one last check to see if there's any more swaps to be done. So it will check, no swaps, check, no swaps, check, no swaps, check, no swaps, check. And it's got to this point that because it's seen that there are no swaps to be done, the algorithm's finished. So it takes that final check just to make sure that everything is in order. Well, that seemed okay, but if we added one more item, what we would find is that our algorithm would grow enormously because we'd have to do another swap and another pass for every single item that we add onto the list. So let's have a look and see what other things that we could use. So there are other standard algorithms. So let's put our things back into a random order. So we have our cuts back in order, or rather back out of order. Um, and our alternative here is to do different types of algorithms. So let's first of all have a look at a merge sort. So what we do is we take half and we split the list. Um, if it is a, um, a, an odd number, um, we can arbitrarily take almost half and then the other half. So here we have a three. Um, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to split it that way, at that point, and then for these ones, split them again. So we've gone all the way down to a single item in our list. So our single items here are 39 and 7. So what we can do is we can take from the left-hand side, we can take them and put them back into an ordered list. So going back a step, we take the lowest, which is 7, and then 39, and then we have two here, and we can compare the two. So these two, seven, put those in first, compare them again, 
20, 39, which gives us at this point now an ordered list. Now we can split these like this. So split and again split. So taking you see this side first, one goes in, then three, and then comparing the two, one first, then two, and three. Now that gives us, let me just move those around so you can see them, that gives us two ordered lists. Now if we push them forward a little bit more, we can then take them and place them back into our ordered list. So remember these leftmost points of our array. So comparing one and seven, we take one, two and seven, so yes you can take another one from the same list, then three and seven, then nothing to compare to over here, so seven, nothing to compare to, so 20, nothing to compare to, so 39. And that way, by merging the lists in small amounts and then bigger and bigger ordered lists, you can end up with one ordered list. Now you can see on there, I didn't need to speed it up. So in terms of time complexity, so in terms of the complexity of the algorithm, this one, so merge sort, is a lot, lot quicker. Now there's an alternative again. There are lots of different, sort, different sorting algorithms, but let's have a look at insertion sort. So let's again mess up our lists. Insertion sort uh, takes two ends of the array, so it assumes that the first item of our array, because it's only one long, just like the merge sort, is sorted. So here is the sorted side of the list. It will then take the next one and bring it out, and it will compare it then to each one. So at this point, it will compare it to seven and say, well, seven's okay, so I need to put it back into above seven, so I don't need to move it. And at this point, we've then got a sorted portion of the list. Now, the next one we can look at is one. So we can take out one, we can compare it to 39. Now, we know that one is less than 39, so we move 39 up. Compare it to seven, we move seven up, and then we can insert one at this point of the sorted portion of the list. We do it again, we look at the next one, so 20, 20 and 39, move 39 up, 20 and 7, well that's fine, so we now have a nice little gap here for 20 to go in. We now have a sorted portion of the list and an unsorted portion. So we take 2, compare it to 39, move it up, compare it to 20, move it up, compare it to 7, move it up. And then compare it to one, it's greater than one, so it goes into our sorted list. So now we have a sorted portion and a final unsorted portion. So finally we're going to take three out, compare it to 39, move it up, compare it to 20, move it up, compare it to seven, move it up, compare it to two, we have the place that it needs to go, in it goes, and we have a sorted list. So there's three potential standard algorithms that you can use for sorting your data.